I firmly believe that intelligent life exists on other planets. However, the reason why we haven't made contact with extraterrestrial beings is quite plausible. We're simply too boring. It's disheartening to admit that we haven't even mastered the art of sending information faster than the speed of light. It's a rather pathetic state of affairs, isn't it? You've probably heard the common argument that the laws of physics prevent us from achieving faster than light communication, but I dare to challenge that notion. In this video, I aim to explain why breaking the speed of light barrier might not be as impossible as we think. In recent years, there has been an upsurge in discussions surrounding unexplained aerial phenomena, formerly known as UFOs. Personally, I'm skeptical that these sightings originate from extraterrestrial civilizations. After all, why would advanced beings bother visiting our dull planet? But who am I to say? Perhaps some of these aerial phenomena are, in fact, space probes from alien species. To accurately assess the likelihood of such occurrences, we must explore the possibility of traveling or transmitting information faster than light. If it is indeed possible, then it's reasonable to assume that extraterrestrial beings, if they exist, are employing such methods. The concept that the speed of light serves as an insurmountable limit originates from Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity. Yes, good old Einstein makes another appearance. The speed of light holds a unique position in his theory because it remains constant for all observers. It's important to clarify that we are referring to the speed of light in a vacuum. When light passes through a medium, its speed is slower and depends on the observer's relative motion. However, the speed of light in a vacuum remains unchanged regardless of the observer's velocity. Although this may sound as captivating as flossing one's teeth, it carries profound implications. No dental crowns popping off, I promise. Imagine a scenario where you and your friend, let's call him Bob, each have a water hose that sprays water at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. Now, Bob boards a train that moves at 200 kilometers per hour, or 20 if you're in the United States, and he turns on his water hose. The water moves relative to Bob at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. However, you might intuitively expect the water to move at the sum of its velocity and the train's velocity. But here's the surprise. The water still moves at the same speed relative to you, despite Bob's motion. This counterintuitive result stems from the fact that the speed of light is constant and does not depend on the observer's motion. To illustrate this phenomenon further, let's consider a scenario involving laser pointers instead of water hoses. Laser pointers emit light at the speed of light, no surprises there. So if Bob hops on a train in a vacuum, yes, in theoretical physics, people don't need to breathe and cows are spherical. How fast would you perceive the light from his laser? Intuitively, you might assume that the light from Bob's laser would be faster than the light from your own laser, accounting for the train's velocity. But once again, that's not the case. The speed of light remains constant. This notion was confirmed through the famous Michelson-Morley experiment. No matter how fast the train moves, light will always move away from it at the speed of light. This fact, although seemingly banal, possesses remarkable implications that may have slipped our attention. Imagine you're trying to make something go really, really fast, faster than light. Let's call this thing an object. Now this object has something called mass, which is like its weight. In physics, we have a famous equation called E equals mc square. It says that the mass of the object is related to its energy. So if you want to make the object move from being still to moving at a certain speed, we need to add energy to it. Here's where it gets interesting. The energy required to make the object go faster depends on how close its speed is to the speed of light. You see, when the object is moving really slowly compared to the speed of light, the energy needed is not too crazy. We can use a simple formula called kinetic energy to calculate it. You might remember kinetic energy from your science class. It's one half times the mass of the object times its velocity squared. It's not too complicated, but when we start getting close to the speed of light, things get a bit crazy. As the object's speed gets closer and closer to the speed of light, the energy needed to make it go faster increases a lot. In fact, it gets so big that it becomes infinite. It means that if we want to make the object move at the speed of light, we would need an infinite amount of energy. It's almost like the universe is telling us that nothing with mass can ever reach the speed of light. 
Another peculiar aspect worth considering is the interpretation of infinities in physics. Typically, when physicists encounter infinite values, they often dismiss them as mathematical artifacts, signaling an error in the calculations or an indication that the current mathematical framework is insufficient. Singularities, such as those associated with the Big Bang or black holes, are usually treated as mathematical oddities rather than genuine physical phenomena. However, when it comes to the argument against surpassing the speed of light, the scientific community has been surprisingly accepting of the infinite energy requirement. It's an inconsistency that warrants further examination and critique. Furthermore, a counterexample to the claim that infinite energy is necessary for achieving light speed undermines the credibility of the argument. The counterexample lies in the origin of mass itself. As we discussed earlier, the majority of an object's mass is a result of binding energy rather than intrinsic mass. The famous equation E equals mc square assumes that the mass of an object comprises the entirety of its energy, even though most of it is binding energy. This discrepancy raises questions about the validity of applying the equation as a definitive argument against surpassing the speed of light. The realization that mass predominantly arises from binding energy prompts us to reconsider the notion that infinite energy is required for objects to travel at the speed of light. The condensed Higgs field, which provides particles with mass, challenges the infinite energy requirement and serves as a potential mechanism for particles to slow down below the speed of light. However, uncondensing the Higgs field is not a feasible solution, as it would likely result in the dissipation or evaporation of the object, hardly a healthy or practical method of achieving faster than light travel. Having addressed the energy and mass aspects of surpassing the speed of light, we now encounter the issue of causality. The preservation of causality is crucial in maintaining the order of events in our universe. The speed of light acts as a fundamental limit for information transmission, ensuring that cause and effect remain intact. If faster than light travel were possible, it would potentially open the door to causality violations and various paradoxes, a perplexing prospect to say the least. One of the main arguments against surpassing the speed of light revolves around the idea that it could lead to time travel paradoxes. The argument posits that if a spaceship were to travel faster than light, an observer might perceive it as moving backward in time. This line of reasoning introduces a time-like closed loop, suggesting that individuals could send messages to their past selves, creating contradictory scenarios. However, upon closer examination, we find that this argument is flawed. Merely observing a spaceship moving faster than light doesn't imply that its internal time also flows backward. Instead, the observer's perspective may give the illusion of reversed time on the spaceship. This realization negates the possibility of sending messages back in time and dispels the notion of time travel paradoxes. It's important to remember that these arguments are based on the principles of special relativity, which lacks a comprehensive understanding of gravity. General relativity, which accounts for gravity, may provide a different perspective on the issue of time travel. To complicate matters further, we must acknowledge that our current understanding of space-time, general relativity, is incomplete. General relativity and quantum theory, two fundamental pillars of physics, have yet to be reconciled into a unified theory of quantum gravity. Quantum mechanics has already shown us that causality and locality can become distorted at the quantum level. It's reasonable to expect that the same could be true in the realm of quantum gravity. Consequently, any argument against faster-than-light travel, based solely on our current theories, may prove to be unfounded once a comprehensive theory of quantum gravity emerges. In conclusion, while the notion of surpassing the speed of light has long been considered an impossibility, recent developments and counterexamples have shed doubt on this belief. The understanding that mass predominantly arises from binding energy challenges the infinite energy requirement for achieving light speed. We must tread cautiously and remain open to future discoveries and advancements in our understanding of the universe. Don't forget to let us know when you think we will be able to travel at the speed of light. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content about science and the universe. Thanks for watching.